Okay, here we are today talking about Corzan CPVC pipe and fitting installations. First thing you want to do is when you get your pipe and fittings, you want to make sure that you're keeping it out of the sun when you get it onto the job site. You want to make sure that uh, you're checking it and inspecting it for cracks or splits that are in the pipe. If you do see a split or a crack in the pipe, then you want to cut it back from the end of that split to a measure of two inches, cut the pipe and then re-inspect it to make sure that it is a clean edge. So you want to make sure that you've got the proper tools for cutting and reaming and chamfering and beveling your pipe. It's very important. You can use a chop saw, you can use a tubing cutter, you can use a ratchet cutter. Just make sure that they are sharp and that they cut your pipe nice and straight. 80% of the strength in your system and where your joint is, is in the bottom third of this fitting. So making sure that this is straight when you cut it is very important because that's where 80% of your strength is at the bottom of the fitting. So I'm going to take and mark my pipe because I want to show you guys how to make a proper cut. I'm going to mark it two inches and a Sharpie is okay to be used on Corzan. It is compatible and it will not harm the pipe. So I'm going to take my tubing cutters and I'm going to use them and it'll give me a nice straight cut. And as I'm doing that, I'm making sure that I'm turning my ratchet. When I'm doing this, I'm making sure that I am turning my tubing cutter about an eighth of a turn as I go around and it will give me a nice straight cut. And there you have it. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I bevel or chamfer the outside and I'm going to take this tool and all I do need to do is take a short or a small amount of material off. I don't need to take a lot. Then I'm going to turn this tool around and I'm going to ream the inside. Then I'm going to take and wipe all these shavings off. If you do not take these shavings off, sometimes they will end up inside the pipe and they can end up in your ball cocks or your angle stops, shower valves, and then you have to clean them. So I've got a really nice edge here. It's going to give me a smooth edge so when I insert my pipe in my, into my fitting, I'm going to get a nice even amount of solvent cement on my pipe and my fittings. So I've got my pipe and my fittings ready to go. I've got my eyewear on to protect my eyes and I'm going to put gloves on to protect my skin. This is a solvent. You need to make sure that you're protecting your skin, your hands, and your eyes. If you're using solvent cement in an area where you do not have a lot of air movement, you don't have open framing, you want to make sure that you're protecting your lungs with a, a mechanical fan to blow air so the solvents aren't, aren't laying on top of you, basically, and you, or you can use a respirator, not the type of a, not a dust mask, but a respirator to make sure that you're not breathing in the fumes. So I've got my pipe and my fitting ready. So I'm going, now I'm going to measure the inside of my fitting, which is about an inch. And then I'm going to take my Sharpie and put a mark on my pipe. And again, I'm going to do it near the print line. Okay. Then I'm going to take and put another mark two inches from that mark. And what I'm doing here is I'm showing you the stopping point or where the coupling is going to stop. And then I'm going to have a sight mark there. And notice I've got it near my print line. So when I install it and it's looking up like this, the inspector can see my sight line when I'm done. So I've got the two marks. Now I've got my primer and my solvent cement. I'm going to take and primer my fitting first. And the thing is, you want to make sure that your dauber is about half the diameter of your fitting. All right, so if this was a two inch fitting, I'd be using a two, uh, one inch dauber. This is a one inch fitting, so I'm using a half inch dauber. Notice I've got my primer on my fitting first, and then my pipe. And notice I've taken the sight mark off of there. That's the depth mark on my socket. Then I'm going to come back and put another coating of primer on my fitting and there I'm ready to go and notice my primer is still wet while my primer is still wet I want to make sure that I get that solvent cement on there if that primer dries then I have to start over and reprimer the pipe and the fitting so notice I'm doing my pipe first I'm doing a really good coat on my pipe and I'm scrubbing it in okay 
you can see where the primer and the solvent cement have mixed. Now I'm going to put in my solvent cement into my fitting and I'm going to scrub it all the way down to the stop so there's no gaps. As I push it together, I give it a quarter turn and I hold. Now, this is an interference fit fit. So what's happening is, if I let this go, this pipe will creep out of the coupling because you've actually solvent welded or chemically welded this pipe together. You're not gluing anything. So as I'm holding it, I'm gonna take and wipe it real quick. That's why it's nice to have gloves. And I've got a good clean joint that doesn't have any cracks or bubbles in it. And after about three to four minutes, I'll never get this joint apart. All right? So I'm gonna make sure that my solvent cements and my primers, I put the caps back on there. And now I'm gonna take and measure to my sight mark. So what happens here is I've got my sight mark and I'm two inches. What that means is because I marked it two inches from my, so my socket depth mark, now I've know, I know that this has been installed completely all the way to the stop. When I look inside, you don't see any excess solvent cement. That way you've got a good joint and testing has been done on this one inch and it'll fail, the pipe will fail at about 3,000 pounds. So it's very, very strong joint. When you solvent weld this joint, it's like not having a joint at all. Thank you.